Hi, I'm Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how to use the Spot Healing Brush in Photoshop Elements. The Spot Healing Brush is a great tool to quickly and easily fix certain kinds of imperfections. For example, it can make skin blemishes like moles and pimples disappear with one click of the mouse. It can also be a quick way to remove distracting wires from a photo or for getting rid of dust and other unwanted debris. So let's go check it out. I'm using Photoshop Elements 12 for this video, but it works the same with other versions as well. Let's start by removing some blemishes. Rather than make the changes right on my photo, I'm going to leave the original intact and do all of the changes on a separate layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new blank layer. To do that, go over to the Layers panel, which should be on the right side of your window. If you don't see it there, go up to the Window menu and click on Layers from there. Mine is already visible, so I'm not going to click on it. To create a new blank layer, just click on the Create a New Layer icon in the Layers panel. It's the one that looks like a piece of paper with a folded over corner. A new blank layer will appear in the Layers panel above the background layer and it'll be named Layer 1 by default. Now let's go over to the Toolbox and make the Spot Healing Tool the active tool. And we can do that just by clicking on it. It looks like a band-aid with a dotted line. The Spot Healing Brush shares the same place in the Toolbox with the regular Healing Brush, which looks like a band-aid without the dotted line. If you see that instead of the Spot Healing Brush, go ahead and click on it and then you can go down to the Tool Options and click on the Spot Healing Brush from there to make it active. Let's look at some of the other options available to us in the Tool Options. Now in some earlier versions of Elements, you'll find these options in the Options bar, which is located at the top of the window. And since we decided to make our changes on a new layer, we need to make sure that Sample All Layers is checked. If it's not checked, just click on it to put a check mark next to it. Notice that there's three different types to choose from. There's Proximity Match, Create Texture, and Content Aware. Create Texture works okay, but eventually it gives me some kind of weird looking pattern, so I don't even consider it as an option anymore. Proximity Match uses digital information from around the edge of your cursor to replace the pixels located inside of your cursor. And Content Aware uses some sort of algorithm based on the digital information around your cursor to the pixels inside of your cursor to change in what almost seems magical sometimes because it's so realistic. I usually just leave the type option set to whatever it is when I make the spot healing brush active and only change it if I don't get satisfactory results after trying it. The other options for the spot healing brush are brush and size. Size is referring to the diameter of the brush. I never change the brush size in the tool options because I like using the keyboard shortcut better because it's more interactive, as you'll see in a little bit. As far as the brush to choose, if I click on this brush preview, you can see there's a whole list of these brushes. I usually stick with um, some of the brushes near the top because they're just either a regular hard edge brush like we have here and if I go down a little further, we get into these softer edge brushes. You really don't know until you try it out. Just don't go down near the bottom here and choose one of these um, specialty brushes like a leaf or something. Either choose a hard or soft edge brush. So I'll stick with this hard edge brush for now. Now let's move the cursor over our photo in the live work area. I'm going to zoom in close to the face. You can do that by pressing command plus sign on a Mac or it would be control plus sign on a PC. Next, place your cursor over a blemish that you want to remove. We want to make our cursor a little bigger than the blemish, so in this case I need to size my brush up and you can size your brushes with the left and right bracket key. The right bracket key will make your brush a little larger every time you press it and the left bracket key will make it smaller. I want to make mine larger, so I'm going to press the right bracket key. And now it's just a little bit bigger than the uh, blemish that I want to remove. 
so I'm just going to click once and we'll see what happens. That worked really well and I would leave my options at those settings and then start clicking the other blemishes. But what if it didn't produce a good result? How would we know what to change? Well, if we look at our options again, there's really only two items to change. We know sample all layers has to be checked and we change the brush size with the keyboard shortcuts so that just leaves type and our brush that we would try to change. With the type setting, if it's set to content aware, we could try proximity instead. And we know with the brush that we'll only use either a hard edged brush or a soft edge brush. So if I hadn't liked my results, I would have pressed Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC to undo that click. Then I would have switched my options. I should make clear that with the spot healing brush, you don't have to just do single clicks. You can also click and drag over areas. For example, in areas of her face where there's a cluster of pimples, I would click and drag over them. So let's click on some of these. I'm going to size my brush up a little bigger on these single ones. There's kind of a cluster right in here that I'm going to try to click and drag on. So I'll click and keep holding down my mouse and then drag over that cluster of blemishes and then let go. And you can see it pretty much took care of all of them in one shot. You just go around and do that and it's, it's pretty quick. You'll kind of get a feel for using this tool and remember if you don't like the results you can just undo it and try again. Because we're doing all of the healing on the layer above the background layer, one thing I like about doing it this way is we can quickly see the before and after results. All we have to do is hide the healing, which is on layer 1, and we'll just see the contents of the background layer, which isn't changed. So we could say that that's our before view. In order to see that, we need to hide the contents of the layer 1, and we can do that by clicking on the eyeball next to it in the Layers panel. When I do that, you can see a red line goes through the eye, indicating that the visibility of that layer is turned off. And now in the Live Work area, we only see the background layer, which is the original state. Click on the eyeball next to layer 1 again, and now we can see the after version in the Live Work area. Let's look at another type of problem that we can fix with the spot healing brush. It's a nice shot of some mountains, but those wires running across kind of wreck it. Let's see how we can use the spot healing brush to remove them. We'll start by creating a new layer in the Layers panel by clicking on the Create a New Layer icon. I'm going to zoom in a little closer by pressing Command plus sign on a Mac, or it would be Control plus sign on a PC. Since the wires are long, continuous items, we can drag over them with the spot healing brush instead of clicking along them. I'm going to leave the tool options set up like they were for our last example and see what happens. I'll start with this top wire and place my cursor over it. If you need to, size it with the left and right bracket keys so that it's a little bit bigger than the width of the wire. I'm going to actually make mine a little smaller. Now I'll click once on the left edge. And without releasing the mouse button, I'll drag along the width of the wire and let go of the mouse button when I reach the other end. It did a pretty good job on the sky area, but it looks blurry where I dragged into the trees over on the right side. One other problem is that it's really hard to follow a line using the mouse. I managed to do it, but my cursor came pretty close to going off the line a couple of times. Let's undo that and try a little different technique. Press the undo button at the bottom of my window. This time I'm going to click once at the left edge again. But now I'm going to release the mouse button and I'm going to move my cursor over to the right a bit and center my brush on the wire. And before I click, I'm going to press and hold down the shift key and then I'll click. And now I let go of the shift key. 
When you hold down the shift key, Photoshop Elements makes a straight line with the spot healing brush between the two places that you click. What I like about this technique is that I don't have to worry about drifting off of the line like when I clicked and dragged, plus I can keep my cursor perfectly centered on the wire. You might wonder why I didn't go all the way to the other end of the wire before I did the shift click. The answer is because the wire isn't completely straight in this photo from one end to the other. If I would have went to the other end because I tried it actually before I recorded this and it left part of the wire near the center out because it hangs down a little bit in that center area, which is fine. I can just do it in a couple different uh, sections like this. I'll start over on the left edge of the wire again that I have left and I'll click and then move my cursor down a ways and shift click there and just keep repeating that until I get to the, uh, the end of the wire. It left a bit of wire out here so I'm just gonna click once and then go to the other end and shift click and see if I can get rid of that. And that worked out pretty well. I'm going to brush over the next three wires all together since they're so close to each other, especially on the right side of the photo. I'll size my brush up using the right bracket key until it's a little bigger than the widest area, which is over on the left side of the photo. Click once over on the left, and then I'll move my cursor not quite to the trees and I'll press and hold down the shift key as I click again and we'll wait for it to process. That did an okay job for a large part of it. It left a couple little bits over on the left edge here so I'm just gonna click once over them, get rid of those. And now I'm just gonna click and drag over these other stray points and see how well I can clean that up. Okay well it looks like I've gone about as far as I can. Now I'm going to click uh, on these two wires over on the left edge and then go over to the right edge of the photo and shift click and see what happens. Well it did okay in the uh, sky area but it looks kind of weird in where the trees are but we can go in and fix that up. If I just brush over that right now actually it does a pretty good job of fixing that up. Maybe I want to size my brush down and just get rid of this little area. I think that looks fine. Size my brush down and just drag over that wire there and see if I can get it to look kind of natural, which I think it looks, it looks fine. This last wire is going to be a little trickier because it goes over some more complex areas compared to the sky. Keep in mind that Many times you can use the spot healing brush to make quick work of getting rid of the majority of the unwanted items and then switch to the clone stamp tool for fine tuning the edit and some final cleanup which we're going to end up doing on these mountains. I'm just going to go to the left edge of this wire and make my brush a little bit smaller. I'll click once on the left edge and then I'll go in between these two mountains and I'll shift click. I'm going to undo that and the reason is notice where the mountain meets the sky in this area I took a big divot out of that edge of the mountain. I'm going to click on the undo button down here. I'm going to undo one more time. There we go. This time I'm going to click on the left edge again but instead of going out here, I'm going to go before I get to that edge of the mountain. And I'm going to shift click there. That looks pretty good. What I discovered is I need to avoid these edges of the mountains because it uh, deforms that and we need to keep that true to what it originally was. I'll start over here and click once and then move my cursor over to here again avoiding the edge of that mountain and I'll shift click there and then I'll go over here click once go out to about here and shift click and then I'll go here click that wire gets pretty lost in the trees so I'll just go up to about here and shift click and see if I can get rid of it and that looks pretty bad here. Let's see if I can get rid of that blurry area.
Yeah, I think that looks okay. I noticed in this area there's a couple spots that look kind of weird, so I'm going to just see if I can go over some of those and clean them up with the spot healing brush. That looks fine. And now for those edges of the mountain, I would want to switch to the clone stamp tool. I'll do that and then zoom up quickly and now sample with the clone stamp tool and see if I can brush away the rest of those wires there and make it look natural. I'm going to turn the visibility off and on for layer one. Actually, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole thing and see the before and after. Now the tree has changed a little bit. As you can see, there's the before and there's the after, but I think it looks plenty natural. Some of these leaves are repeating, so I could actually go in and clone a little sky onto there to just kind of break it up and make it look more unique. I don't think anybody's going to know the difference, but I do want to keep the, the original shape of the mountain. If I look at the before and after where those wires go through, that looks fine, I think. And I can switch back to the spot healing brush and see if I can get rid of some of these tree branches. We could even try to get rid of this support wire, so I'll click once at the top and then shift click down at the bottom. And that did a pretty good job. So I think I'm going to stop there. If I do um, a before and after, it's a huge improvement. It's a little dirty looking up here in the uh, upper left corner. I'm going to take the clone stamp tool and make my brush a little larger. And I'm just going to steal some area from here and just clone that in a little bit to clean it up. This dirty area was actually there already, but I'm going to get rid of it anyway. And I think that looks great. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.